Heavenly Father, God, we come before you today, yes. Lord. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your precious anointing. I'm asking you, Lord, to help me speak forth your word with clarity and understanding so your people can hear and learn and grow in your kingdom. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, last week we had a teaching on the kingdom of God, a basic foundation of God's kingdom. And one of the things I covered was that the kingdom of God is within you. Uh, we need to be aware that uh, our whole makeup, our spirit man, I guess you'd say, would be the kingdom of God, but it's tied in with our soul, which is our mind, will, and emotions, and our body. So when we have an attack on our soul, our mind, will, and emotions, or a physical attack, it affects our kingdom. And so today, I want to continue with giving you uh, tools to work with to help you grow your kingdom, help you to protect your kingdom, and uh, we can grow thereby. So today's message is entitled, God's Photo Album or Pictures of God and His Throne. Now, what do you mean God's photo album? He doesn't have any photo album. Well, when you have events in your life where you're, something happens and you're proud of somebody graduating or getting married, you take pictures. Well, God's Son has, who is the King of Glory and the King of Kings, he has done wonderful things throughout the ages and in God's mind there are uh, photo albums, you could call it, of what Jesus has accomplished. And so today we're going to see pictures of God and His throne. And I did this so that, I guess the way this started, let me, let me say this. I was praying one day and I said, Lord God, I have such a hunger for you. I have such a, uh, a hunger and a thirst. I want to know you. I want to see you. And he said, well, look in my word. I'm in the word. If you want to see me, if you want to see what I look like, I'm right there in the word. So I'm thinking, what? And so I started reading the Word with the idea of looking for God and seeing what God looks like. Another thing is that on occasion we get attacked in our mind. We have things that happen to us. Words are spoken against us or words are thrown in our face. It could be a boss, it could be a girlfriend or a boyfriend or a husband or a wife, and that things like that hurt us. And we need to learn how to combat that and cast down the bad images and the bad thoughts and the bad memories. And we need to replace those with godly images and godly thoughts. So if you have a storm in your mind where you've had a bad day and you're mulling these things over and over in your mind, why did they do that to me? Why did they say that to me? Well, stop, be at peace, and meditate on these things that I'm going to reveal to you today. Meditate on these godly images. They will bring peace to you they will help you to go to sleep at night. If you're lying down in bed and you have this storm in your mind and you're meditating on all these things, these negative things, it'll just stir you up and cause you to not go to sleep like you should. 
Philippians 4 verse 8 says, Think on things that are true, honest, just, pure, lovely, good report, virtuous, and praiseworthy. Now, what are you thinking about when you're trying to go to sleep? Does that line up with these eight things? If you are thinking carnal thoughts, well, that's the opposite of pure, and so on and so forth. So, this is a, what I'm going to show you is going to be a tool to help you to conquer your mind, to steal your mind, and be at peace. All right, let's move on. First thing I want to say is, Jesus is God. And some people may have a problem with that, but who are you going to go by? Are you going to go by what somebody told you is true? Or are you going to go by the standard, which is the Word of God? The Word of God is true. God is not a liar. God always tells the truth. Right. So... <clears throat> Today I will attempt to paint pictures for you in your mind's eye to see what the Word of God is saying. Since I am not an artist, if I could paint and draw the things that I see in my mind's eye, I would be able to better show you uh, what I am thinking about and what I'm seeing. But I will attempt to paint word pictures. For example, if I say, oh, look at that dog. Well, you can think in your mind many different varieties of dogs. The dog I'm thinking about may not be the dog that you're thinking about. Then I can say, oh, look at that black dog. Then you can say, oh, it's a black dog. Then I say, oh, look, it's a little black puppy. So by using the words, you can paint a picture in your eye, in your mind's eye. Okay, so Proverbs chapter 30 verse 4 says, Who hath ascended up into heaven or descended? Who hath gathered the wind in his fists? Who hath bound the waters in a garment? Who hath established all the ends of the earth? What is his name? And what is his son's name, if thou canst tell? So right here it's saying that his son did all these things. Alright, so the next one we want to say is, Jesus got around. Micah 5 verse 2 says, But thou, Bethlehem, Ephratah, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me, that is to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth have been from of old, from everlasting. So, he has been around and he has been doing things from the foundation of the earth. John 1.1 1, 1 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him, that was not anything made that was made. Another verse is Hebrews chapter 1, verse 2. God has in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. Jesus is the creator. He created the heavens and the earth. Ezekiel said, Ah, oh, Lord God, behold, Thou hast made the heavens and the earth by thy great power and stretched out arm. There is nothing too hard for thee. And God comes back ten verses later and says, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. There is nothing too hard for me. Hebrews 1.3 Jesus, being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, he sat down on the right hand of the majesty on the high. 
Philippians chapter 2 verse 6 says, who although being essentially one with God and in the form of God, possessing the fullness of the attributes which make God God, he did not think this equality with God was a thing to be eagerly grasped or retained. But he stripped himself of all privileges and rightful dignity so as to assume the guise of a servant or a slave, and that he became like men and was born a human being. So God, Jesus, was always God, and it was until he was born of the Virgin Mary that he became a human being. Uh, so God appeared to people in the Old Testament in the form of the King of Glory, the Son of God, the pre-incarnate Jesus Christ, meaning before he was born in a flesh and blood body, born of the Virgin Mary, he was still God, still moving on the earth. So here we have our first experience with Ezekiel. Ezekiel was minding his own business. He was sitting at home entertaining the elders of Judah who were sitting in his house. So Ezekiel chapter 8 verse 1 says, And it came to pass in the sixth year, in the sixth month, in the fifth day of the month, as I sat in my house, and the elders of Judah sat before me, that the hand of the Lord God fell there upon me. Then I beheld, and lo, a likeness as the appearance of fire, mm -hmm. from the appearance of his waist downward, mm -hmm. fire, and from his waist upward, as the appearance of brightness, as the color of amber. Mm -hmm. And he put forth the form of a hand, and took me by a lock of my hair, my head, and the Spirit lifted me up between the earth and the heaven, and brought me in the visions of God to Jerusalem. Now, I'm sure I've read this numerous times, and it did not dawn on me until recently what he was talking about. This is the color of amber. It's the color of liquid or of molten metal. Mm -hmm. Ezekiel 1 verse 4. Now, this, he gets into a story here that I can relate to because when I was a young, young guy, you know, I helped Daddy on the farm. We raised cattle, we planted uh, stuff, we harvested the hay for the cattle, and you could look across the fields and you could see quite a ways, unobstructed by trees in the way. And here Ezekiel is in a similar situation where he's outside, he's looking off into the distance, and he can see a dark cloud forming in the distance. Mm -hmm. This gets bigger and bigger, it comes closer, and he starts to hear thunder. He starts to see lightning shooting out of the cloud. It gets closer. And he starts to see the color of amber. Well, it keeps getting closer. There's lightning, there's thunder, and there's this color of fire, amber, in the middle of the cloud. And then it opens up. And let's read Ezekiel 1 verse 4. And I looked, and behold, a whirlwind come out of, came out of the north, a great cloud, and a fire enfolding itself. Whoa, this is a fire tornado. Mm -hmm. And a brightness was about it, and out of the midst thereof, as the color of amber, out of the midst of the fire, here is a picture of a fire tornado. Mm -hmm. This could be something similar to what Ezekiel saw, but I'm sure what he saw was a much grander, glorious, powerful fire tornado. Verse 22, And the likeness of the firmament 
Now here we move on to when the, this vision of the glory of God comes closer and the clouds depart and he sees this vision of what I call the, the throne of God. It's apparent. Uh, the Lord himself later on and called it the glory of God. But he sees living beings, uh, majestic spiritual creatures, living beings. He sees uh, the wheels of God of this, of this throne and calls it a wheel within a wheel. And, uh, but right here, what, I'm, what the Bible says is happening is the way this thing is structured, I picture it as two, two rooms. You have the lower room where these living beings are, then you have the upper room where the throne of God is. Well, the lower room, Ezekiel chapter 1, verse 22, it says, And the likeness of the firmament upon the head of the living creature was as the color of the terrible crystal stretched forth over their heads above. Which means you have the living creatures and they are worshiping God like in Revelation that says they're crying out holy, holy, holy continually. Well, above their heads, the ceiling above their head is as the color of the terrible crystal. Now, terrible here translates as awesome, breathtaking. It was so glorious, it took his breath away. And I'll show you what he saw. <clears throat> he saw crystal. He didn't say they were all the same color. He didn't say they were all clear like diamond. But it was awesome and breathtaking. So here are two examples of gemstones that are crystals which could be embedded in that ceiling. Here's two more. Beautiful. Now, imagine for a second, above that ceiling, you have the throne of God. Right. You have God Almighty, you have Jesus Christ, and God is described as brightness, as bright or brighter than lightning, if you can imagine that. Majestic. Lightning is so bright, it hurts my eyes when I look at it or a welder's flash when he's welding, mm -hmm. that is so bright, like mm -hmm. lightning. Mm -hmm. But you have this intense light shining through that ceiling upon all of these crystals, multitudes of different colors, and the, the rays coming through would just be a sight to behold, and that's why it's so breathtaking. So that, this is the vision that Ezekiel saw. Verse 26. And above the firmament that was over their heads, this is the second floor now, okay? Above the firmament that was over their heads was the likeness of a throne, as the appearance of a sapphire stone. And upon the throne, the likeness of the throne was the likeness as the appearance of a man above opponent. This is the Son of Man, this is Jesus Christ, sitting on the throne next to his Abba Father. So that's sapphire, that's blue. And you'll hear that word again in a few minutes. Verse 27, And I saw as the color of amber, as the appearance of fire round about within it, from the appearance of his waist upward, and from the appearance of his waist downward, I saw, as it were, the appearance of fire, and it had brightness round about. As the appearance of the bow that is in the cloud in the day of rain, which is the rainbow. The rainbow itself has seven colors. Mm -hmm. Like we learned in school, the, the colors of the rainbow are Roy G. Biv. You remember that? 
Yeah. Uh, red, orange, yellow, yeah. green, blue, blue, indigo, and violet. And so, <clears throat> you have a rainbow, the appearance of the rain of the bow that is in the sky, so was the appearance of the brightness round about. This was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of the Lord. And when I saw it, I fell upon my face, and I heard a voice of one that spoke to me. Well, let's move on. Is Daniel's dream. Daniel, great prophet of God, chapter 7, verse 9. This is a dream that he had. He said, I watched till thrones were put in place, and the Ancient of Days was seated. His garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head was like pure wool. His throne was a fiery flame, its wheels a burning fire. Now, who is the Ancient of Days? That is not Jesus, that is our Heavenly Father. Okay? So his throne was a fiery flame, its wheels a burning fire. Now to me, that's those same wheels that are appearing in Ezekiel chapter 1 that are attached to the throne. Verse 10, a fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. Here are two examples of fiery streams, lava coming out of an active volcano. So this is coming out from before the throne. Verse 13. I was watching in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man, coming with the clouds of heaven. He came to the Ancient of Days, that's his heavenly Father, and they brought him, Jesus, the Son of Man, they brought him near before him. Now we turn to another example. Moses and the burning bush. In Exodus chapter 3, verse 2, And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him, unto Moses, in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. Here's an example of a burning bush. Now, this is a natural burning bush, the bush that Moses saw, Jesus, the pre-incarnate Son of God, the King of Glory, was in his natural state a fire, mm -hmm. a consuming fire. And so, if this would have been what Moses saw, there would still be green leaves right. and branches fully intact without being burned. Now we move to Mount Sinai. <laughs> Exodus chapter 19, verse 18. Now Mount Sinai was completely in smoke because the Lord descended upon it in fire. Its smoke ascended like the smoke of a furnace and the whole mountain quaked a little bit. No, it quaked greatly, as in earthquake quaking. So here we have another verse, which is a warning against idolatry. Deuteronomy 4, verse 23 says, Take heed unto yourselves, lest you forget the covenant of the Lord your God, which he made with you and make you a graven image by the likeness of anything which the Lord thy God has forbidden thee. For the Lord thy God is a consuming fire, even a jealous God. So we need to keep in mind that who we are serving, we need to uh, keep ourselves pure, uh, not allow ourselves to take the luxury of dwelling on things that we shouldn't dwell on, allowing our flesh to have a flesh feast, which is not worshiping God. That's the opposite.
So the Lord our God is a consuming fire, a jealous God. Now, <clears throat> another instance is when Abraham saw God. In Genesis chapter 15, verse 9. And God said unto him, Take me and a heifer of three years old, and a she-goat of three years old, and a ram of three years old, and a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. What a combination. Mm -hmm. Verse 10. And he took unto him all these, and divided them in the midst. In other words, he divided them right down the middle, from head to the tail. And he laid each piece, one against another, but the birds divided he not. And it came to pass that when the sun went down, and it was dark, behold, a smoking furnace and a burning lamp that passed between those pieces. <clears throat> now, get the picture here. God is getting ready to have a covenant with Abraham and he tells him to take these livestock a three-year-old female cow a male and female goat cut them in half and two birds and he puts Abram to sleep because this is a covenant that only God can do. Man has nothing to do with it except obey. He obeyed God. He brought the livestock. He slaughtered them. And he did what God said. Now the rest was up to God. And you think about this. This is a sacrifice that Abraham made. These three-year-old livestock, they are of the age that they can be income producing. When we had cattle, when we had a farm, we every year could depend on uh, another crop of calves being born, which grew up and at the opportune time we sold them and we made a nice profit. So the same with Abraham, he had to sacrifice his income producing property to the will of the Lord. Now, what's the deal with the two birds? I thought about that and what came to mind was <clears throat> birds are seed stealers. Uh, when you plant a crop and the birds come and steal your seed, well, that's a frustrating thing in your life. And this reminds me of a story my daddy told me when he was a young boy, about maybe 13 years old. He had planted some peanuts. He had planted a couple of rows in the, in the, uh, in the farmland. And lo and behold, Pigeons come and they dig and they pluck up those seeds, those peanuts, mm -hmm. and they fly away. Mm -hmm. Well, he shooed them all away and, and was mad at them and said, well, I don't know what I'll do, I'm going to fix you. He goes into the house and gets his shotgun. And so when he shooed them all away, they, they all landed at the very top of the barn and said, Okay, I'll see what you're doing. So he got himself lined up. <laughs> so that when he took a shot, he could get the, the, uh, the pigeons. So boom! And the pigeons start raining down off the, the top of the roof. Mm -hmm. Yes! I got him! And so then it dawned on him, Oh, what did I do? That's not my pigeons! He killed his uncle's pigeons. <laughs> so he puts them all in a bag, brings them to his mama and says, Mama, Nokmat's pigeons were stealing my peanuts and I shot them. Ha! Oh, you better go bring that to Nokmat and see what he says. So Nokmat said, Well, boy, 
You need to pull up those birds, you'll make us a gumbo. Come on. So it turned all right. It turned out all right for Daddy. Yeah. But uh, keep in mind that what God wants, not slaughtered livestock, He wants us as a living sacrifice. That's okay. We have to offer ourselves up holy, without spot, without blemish as living sacrifices unto the Lord God Almighty. All right, let's move on. The next one is Isaiah sees God. Isaiah chapter 6, verse 1. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne. He did what? He saw the Lord. He saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and His train filled the temple. You see a bride walking down the aisle and her train might be ten foot long. Well, God's train of His majestic robe filled the entire temple. Hallelujah. Move on. The Daniel, the book of Daniel, that's a story about the fiery furnace. Daniel 3, verse 23. And these three men, these are the friends of Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego fell down bound into the midst of the burning fire furnace. The king said, the king answered and said, Lo and behold, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. So here we have the pre-incarnate Son of God, Jesus Christ, in the midst of the fire, just like He created the... Uh, he was in an appearance of fire at the burning bush, and the bush was not consumed. Here we have the same Jesus who... His fire was able to destroy the bands that were holding them bound, but yet they were not hurt, they were not burned, their clothes didn't even smell like smoke. That's a holy fire that the Son of God uh, had that, and He produced that result for them. Next one is having supper with God. Anybody here want to have supper with God? Yeah. Amen. Exodus 24, 9. Then went up Moses and Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, and seventy of the elders of Israel. So that's 74 people. And they saw the God of Israel. They actually saw the God of Israel. And there was under his feet, as it were, a paved work of a sapphire stone. Remember, we saw that word previously. And as it were, the body of heaven in his clearness. So earlier we saw the throne of God was as the color of sapphire. And here we have a paved work on the floor on top of the mountain of a sapphire stone. And upon the nobles of the children of Israel he laid not his hand. Also they saw God and did eat and drink. Praise God. Matthew 3.11 Jesus said, no, John said, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he that comes after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and the fire. He knew that this was the Almighty Son of God, who he wasn't even worthy to uh, bear his shoes or to tie his shoelaces or undo his lashing of his shoes. He knew, he realized that this was Almighty God. And this person here, he will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. On the day of Pentecost, Acts chapter 2, we hear and read that there was a rushing mighty wind which sounds to me like a tornado, or the sound of a tornado. And there was fire 
being blown onto the apostles and the disciples, the 120 who were in that room. And this to me could be a representation of the pillar of fire that was at the tabernacle uh, in, in Moses' day, or it could be a tornado of fire that we saw in Ezekiel. The bottom line is this. John 17, 5, Jesus said, And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. Sanctify them, my disciples, my apostles, my people, who will hear you later on through the centuries. Sanctify them through your truth. Your word is truth. And the glory which you gave me, I have given them, that they may be one even as we are one. Jesus is saying, God has given us his glory. And this glory is in our heart, in our spirit man. Amen. Okay? For the purpose that we all be one, we be united. Okay? Matthew 5 verse 8, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. That is my goal. I want to be pure in heart. I want to see God. So that concludes our teaching for today. Amen. So Amen. Uh, this teaching will be up on YouTube. Uh, you can go to youtube.com forward slash keyword guy and see all of my teachings and all of Pastor Ronnie's teachings. Thank you. <coughs> Amen. Amen.